This is the African History Class. Now, our elders say that until the lion learns to write or tell his own story, the tale of the hunt would always glorify the hunter. That is why we have to tell the lion's story. We have heard so much of their story. It's time now to tell our story. And of course, telling it from our own perspective, the perspective of the truth. This is the African history class. And today we have a very interesting story to tell you. We're going to be telling the story of a Catholic priest who put aside all the Catholicism that he had been taught, unlearned everything, and decided to move up and pick up a new challenge. It never happened in this part of the world. For the first time, we saw that happen. Today's story is going to be a story that will open your eyes. It will be a story that is so daring, a story that will mesmerize you. This is the African history class. And of course, my name, Black Rasta. Now today we're talking about the man who was born in 1930. As historians, when we mention 1930, so many different events come into our minds. 1930, on the second day of November, was the day that Haile Selassie was crowned King of Kings and Lord of Lords, the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah, all the way in Addis Ababa, in Ethiopia. 72 nations came around and bowed down before him and called him, Hail the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah. In Amharic, we say, Amasa Yahuda Yahuda Amasa Nagusto Nugaste Danielam. Aile Selassie was that man. But that was 1930 in Addis Ababa on the second day of November. Our hero was born circa 1930. And he lived all the way until 1992. August of 1992. This story is about to get interesting. When he was born, he was christened in the Catholic Church. And given his first communion in the same Catholic church, he was christened Vincent. In his home, he was called Kwabna Damwa. His father was Damwa. He himself was Kwabna. So he became Vincent Kwabna Damwa. But later in life, he threw away all the British names, all the Catholic names, and upheld his African identity and his African names and tradition. Today we are talking about the man, Vincent Kwabena Damwa, a.k.a. Osofu Komfor Damwa. Osofu Komfor Damwa was born in 1930, right here in the Gold Coast. As a little child, he was directed to the Catholic Church as the way to heaven, as the way to pleasing God. And all his life, he always wanted to practice as a Catholic priest, he loved the cassock. He also loved the rosary. Oh, and on service days, he loved how the incense uh, would be flowing all over the church in so many different directions. He loved to see how the smoke wove the tail around so many heads and around legs. It was so heavenly for him. Also for comfort d'amour. All this time, he was called Vincent Kwabena d'amour. In the Catholic Church, he was so loved because he was so respectful. And he started to serve Mass. Oh, as an altar boy, he would go early in the morning, be there, 
and wait until all the services were done. These were the days where they had first mass, second mass, third mass. They did all this and he would stay and go through all these masses. He loved to hear all the wonderful singing and the beautiful preaching and then the well-dressed people who came to the church. Vincent Kwabena Damwa, born in 1930. As he was growing up, he told himself he would be a Catholic priest and bam, he did become one. He was sent to the seminary and over there, he behaved himself so well. Ah, in fact, it was in the days of colonialism. The British were here. The British endorsed him because character-wise, he was number one. And he behaved so well, even outside the church. They knew that he was going to be a Catholic priest of honor and of repute. Yes, he became one. And when he became one, he wore his cassock. He held his rosary. Oh, he preached so well. He was so knowledgeable. So the Catholic Church decided to send him to America. To the Diocese of Pittsburgh in the United States of America. And there he was in charge of African American affairs. You want to hear it again? They sent him all the way to America, the United States of America. To serve in the diocese of Pittsburgh. And he served in his right as a Catholic priest. Reverend Vincent Kwabena Damwa. They loved him. He was brilliant. He interacted so well with the African Americans. One day, one man came over to him to ask him. Why are you a Catholic priest? An African American. And he said that is the way to heaven. He asked him again, what happened to the ancestral worship in Africa? The powerful ancestors, would they go to hell? All the wonderful ancestors who are inspiring us to leave America and go to Africa. He said, of course they will go to hell. They didn't know Jesus. Jesus Christ is the only way. The light and the truth. If you don't have the light, you don't have the truth, then you can't find a way. You will go to hell. The African-American shook his head. And something just came in to interrupt the conversation. That night, Reverend Vincent Kwabena Damwa could not sleep. He thought about this over and over. Ah, so my ancestors will go to hell? My father, my mother, their father, their mother, their fathers, 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 mothers, 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 mothers would all go to hell because they didn't know Jesus Christ? Wow! So I come from a hellish background. Am I the only one who has been saved in my family? He kept on thinking and thinking. It wasn't long before he was called back to return to Ghana. Of course, he returned. Listen! There was another opportunity for him to go to America. And this time around, he went to study. What was he supposed to study? Now listen attentively. Students, the first time he was in America, he was in the diocese of Pittsburgh in the church. And he dealt with what? African-American issues. Until an African-American man approached him and asked him about ancestral worship. All along, his eyes were fixated on Jesus Christ, going to heaven, the truth and the light. He never thought about ancestral worship being evil or even bad. All he knew was that anybody who did not know Jesus would go to hell. Till that question was asked him. So when he returned to America this time, he was a man who was never ever short of ideas. So for a man to approach him and ask him a question, and he answered so outlandishly, he knew that he had some homework to do. The church sent him over to go and study something relating to theology, something relating to Christian theology. And he agreed. But when he arrived in America, he changed the course. He wanted to study African traditional religion. What? So Harvard University, where he attended in 1971, he graduated. It was a big blow. And I'll tell you something. 
the moment he decided he was going to study African traditional religion, the church in America sent the message all the way to the then Ghana to tell the people in there, listen, the priest that you sent here to study Christian theology is now studying African traditional religion. Are you aware? They wrote to him to answer. And he said, oh yes, I'm just studying to broaden my knowledge. I'm beginning to think about so many different things. And every time I go to bed, my eyes cannot close. Every time I think. So I think I just need to broaden my horizon. They were not happy with it. He said, please, leave it aside and study Christian theology. He said, no. They said, yes. He said, no. Yes. No. Yes. They decided to cancel the scholarship they were giving to him. You are on your own. They threatened him with that. But he continued. And they decided to relax for him. In 1971, he completed his studies. And his eyes were open to so many different things about the African traditional religion. Today we're talking about Vincent Kwabena Damwa, born in 1930, right here in the Gold Coast. After he got the information that he wanted, and grabbed his PhD. He became priest, or better still, Reverend Dr. Vincent Kwabena Damwa. But he never used the doctor. And he did not want to be called Reverend. Upon arrival in the country, his behavior changed. He didn't even want to wear the cassock anymore. He didn't want to hold the rosary. But he was still in there doing his things. Eight years later, in 1979, Jerry John Rawlings the bad boy of Ghanaian coup d'etats, came in and boom, with his revolution, he arrested and shot to death several leaders of the country. We all remember Afrifa. We remember Echiampo. We also remember Akufu. Most of us would also remember Feli. We remember all the people that Jerry John Rawlings in the name of a certain revolution in 1979, tied to the firing squad, shot all of them, -ta 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 killed everybody. It was Ghana's bloodiest coup d'etat, 1979. The Christian Council spoke against it. It was only Vincent Kwabena Damwa who clapped for Rawlings and said, Rawlings, you know what? You have done well. In his own words, I'm going to read to you what he said. Listen. We do not love those executed less, but we love our country more. Why all the fuss about execution? I believe that the AFRC has the right to exact capital punishment for the common good of the country. We hope and pray that the number is not too large. Christ died on the cross to save mankind. We hope and pray that those who have to die accept the challenge courageously and prayerfully to save Ghana. Wow. Wow. That was what he said. He said, if Jesus Christ came to die for us, please, those that are rolling short, they should be courageous enough to also die like Jesus Christ died with a prayer. To save Ghana. It's not that we don't love them. We love them. But we can't love our country less. They have to die. The Catholic Church was so embarrassed. This was 1979. When Rawlings heard that. He was so happy because. He was looking for support. At that time. He had this populist support. Very popular. People were supporting him. Let the blood flow. Junior Jesus. But the clergy held back a little bit. It was Vincent Kobnadamwa who came out boldly to support the killings. So Rollins was getting closer to him, trying to find out who this man was. 1979. The Catholic Church was not happy with him at all and decided that they would have to suspend him. But watch what happened. Interesting things. Boom! 1982, something happened that was like a tsunami. Nobody saw it coming in the Catholic Church. 
Maybe only a few had the hint. I'm going to be telling you that in the interim. Today we are talking about Vincent Kwabena Damwa, a.k.a. Osofu Komfuo Damwa. Osofu Komfuo, the chief priest of the African traditional religion, Damwa. He is the one we are talking about today. In 1982, something interesting happened. Take a second. This channel is called the African History Class. And African is spelled A-F-R-E-E-K-A-N. The class is K-L-A-S-S. Please subscribe to our channel and click on the notification button so that every time some of these wonderful histories come up, you'll be able to pick them up quickly and be the first to know. Hear me now. Can we rewind a little bit? Can we go back? Can we go back? Can we go back? Listen. Vincent Kwabena Damwa, remember I told you, was so interested in becoming a Catholic priest. He actually became a Catholic priest when he was only 27 years. He was born in 1930. So, by 1957, the year of independence of this great country called Ghana, he became a Catholic priest, cassock wearing, rosary wielding. Wow! Yes, he did. He became a Catholic priest. He was a very vocal man. In those days, there was a certain Catholic priest, and this Catholic priest was also so vocal, and he spoke against Kwame Nkrumah. In fact, Kwame Nkrumah saw him as somebody who was speaking against the independence of Ghana. He was a man who was not interested in seeing the people uphold their cultural values. And Nkrumah saw that as a certain kind of infiltration of culture. Do you get it? So Nkrumah did not like this man. My brother, my sister. And this man, Nkrumah decided to arrest and in prison. And he was the Anglican Bishop of Accra. Can you believe that? He was called Reginald Richard Rosevier. He arrested him and locked him up. Comfort Damois was the first to talk. Nkrumah is a dictator. Why should he start fighting the church? They are fighting the church. At the time, Nkrumah was questioning them. Why would you not allow Ghanaians to wear their local attire to church. Rather, you want them to look like Europeans. And all those kind of conversations. In fact, the Anglican Bishop of Accra, Reginald Richard Rosevier, didn't like that idea. Colonialism had just ended. Independence had come in. Ha! Ah, Nkrumah arrested him, locked him up, and deported him. He sent him back to England. Osofu Comfort Damwa didn't like the idea and he spoke against Nkrumah. Nkrumah said, eh, hey, you have a colonialist mind. I will deal with you. Nkrumah arrested him and locked him up too. He said, that's your boss. We locked him and deported him. As for you, we cannot deport you, but we can lock you. He locked Osofu Comfort Damwa and he was in there, a Catholic priest behind bars. Remember Nkrumah himself set out to becoming a Catholic priest. Did you know that? Nkrumah set out to become a Catholic priest. Do you know that when Nkrumah even traveled out of the country to study, he studied theology? He wanted to be a Catholic priest. But why was he not able to make it? He impregnated a woman whilst at the seminary. And he knew that he was going to be sacked. So Nkrumah decided to run away from the seminary. But deep inside him, he still wanted to be a priest. And even in America, he would go from church to church preaching. This is the African history class. A comfort, Damois was locked up. He took the Catholic bishop of Cape Coast at the time, Kojo Amisa, to go and beg so that he'll be freed. That was when he was freed. And when he came out, he was told to be careful with his utterances. Later in life, Osofo Comfort Damois 
gave Kwame Nkrumah his stone. He said he was fighting imperialism. He was fighting the colonization of our culture. At the time, he only saw it as an infiltration of the Catholic Church. So in 1982, Osofu Konfo decided to leave the Catholic Church. In fact, they decided to suspend him because he was getting closer and closer to Rawlings. To the point that Rawlings even gave him a PNDC card and he became a member of the PNDC at the time. Remember in those days, there were many people who saw the PNDC as a terrorist group terrorizing Ghanaians. So when Okonfo Damwa became part of the PNDC in 1982, the church suspended him and he went ahead to say, you cry, I wanted to leave the church. So he resigned. But it didn't take long. In the same 1982, he resigned from the PNDC and decided that he was going to form a group known as the Africania Mission. Amera! You say, Ame. Amera! Ame. The headquarters was in South Africa and it upheld the African traditional religion. No European way. No praying in any other language apart from the African language. The pouring of libation. He tore apart his cassock and threw away his rosary. No more Holy Mary, Mother of God, full of grace, pray for us sinners. No! He became a full-blown African traditionalist. Today we are talking about Vincent Kwabena Damwa, the reverend. He threw away the Vincent and he decided to call himself Osofo Konfu Damwa. He moved on with the Amera group, that's the Africania mission. Yes, they moved from place to place, preaching on radio, on TV. They were gaining a lot of members, especially with people who had that thing in their minds that the Catholic Church was a certain kind of invasive culture right in the African space. Many people left the church. He was now a threat to the Catholic Church. Many people said, if a whole priest can leave the Catholic Church, then it means there is something wrong with the church. The church became an enemy to Osofu Konfor Damwa, and Osofu Konfor Damwa also became an enemy to the church. He left the church. And when he left the church, he started his own Africania mission. It became so popular in this country, spread all over Africa. Unfortunately, our hero for today fell ill. As he fell ill, he died in August 1992. He left behind a wife and a son. Today we remember this man. Today we remember this great son of the land. Today we honor you. We honor you for this revolutionary move. He became the first Catholic priest on the continent of Africa to dash away Catholicism after he became a priest and hold on to his African identity. He moved from country to country preaching. Today, if you are a member of the Africania mission, we are talking about the founder. We are talking about the spiritual head. He was the man who pushed for prayer at national events from the African traditionalists. So today when you see libation poured at big events, animals slaughtered and prayer done to our ancestors, you cannot take out the influence of Osofo Konfor He died in August 1992. Yes, he died at the age of 62. Today we remember you, Papa. Papa Yesu, Papa Yesu, and Yesu. Papa Yesu, Yekai Kaiu. Papa, Uni Yaminko Wate. Papa, Miss Uni Yaminko. Papa, Demilfa Dwe Wate. Demilfa Dwe, 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 Papa, Uni Yaminko. Uni Yaminko. Uni Yaminko. Uni Yaminko Wate. 
Papa, me see you in Papa, me know you are in the house. Me know you are in the house. Me know you are in the house. Me know At his funeral, the Catholic Church never represented him. At his funeral, no member of the Catholic Church was encouraged to attend. He was buried right here in Ghana. Today we remember you. If we do meet again, we will find out more about you. All the hidden details we will bring in the next version. And now, in the burden of knowledge, I ask you, now that you know, what would you do? Be an any ole, mini o bafe, ye zunda kagani, meza kayini, ye ain pa bango, mukaye nan, fifi aye nya, no kai na wo, banaehu, ebe den. Banaehu, ebe ya bade, lele anjima singa be kone, lele anjima singa beeri. It's been the African history class. This is where we tell our own version of our story. They say, until the lion learns to tell his own story, the tale of the hunt would always glorify the hunter. That is why we are telling our story. Remember, this is the African history class, and the channel is the African history class. African spelled A F R W E K A N. History H I S T O R Y. Class is K L. ASS. Recommend this channel to your friends, your family, your children. This is a pure African history channel. We thank you. This has been the class. The African history class. <laughs> Jesus, you're gonna make me cover with love.